In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the interior routine I do on this MG. Now, this is a car that I regularly maintain, but it is a bit dirtier than usual after a trip to the beach. I will be using the help of some chemicals that have been sent as well to get my honest opinions on. The first thing that I did on this car was vacuum out the boot so I picked up as much of that debris as possible that was all over the cover and then once I'd dealt with that I did remove the cover as well to get the dust and debris that had kind of been trapped underneath it. Once I was happy that the boot area was free from any dust and debris, I then went in with the Garage Therapy Interior Cleaner, a 1 in 10 dilution. I agitated this using the interior scrub pads from Interdetailing and I find these to be really really effective at covering a much larger area quite quickly compared to using a detailing brush and they also give a lot deeper cleaning than just using a microfiber towel as well. I then moved on to the door shorts where I started with a 1 in 10 mix of the Garage Therapy Citrus in the IK sprayer. I let that dwell for a few minutes and then blasted it off using the pressure washer. Now I obviously have to be careful here not to get any water in the interior but as long as I'm careful with the angle it doesn't usually cause me any problems. I then went in with a detailing brush to get into all those rubber seals with that citrus again before rinsing it down using low pressure this time. To finish off the door shuts, I went in with a 164 mix of Absolute Rinseless Wash and just gave them a wipe down to remove any dirt that might be remaining. Now the next step was to remove and clean the mats. Now being rubber mats this does make my life a lot easier compared to cleaning fabric. So I just started by giving them a pressure wash down and then went in with the Garage Therapy Interior Cleaner again. I do like using the drill brush here as it does speed up the process and with this kind of honeycomb design it is a little bit awkward to get into the corners with a regular brush whereas the drill brush just minimises the risk of me missing any areas. Once I'd finished cleaning the mats, I did give them a rinse down and a shake to remove as much water as possible and then I went in with a car dryer to blast away as much of that water that was remaining so that they were able to dry fully a lot quicker in the sun. I then moved back inside the car and gave that a thorough vacuum using the crevice attachment on all the carpets and then I used the dusting brush on the more delicate areas like the leather and the plastics to avoid damaging those areas.
The next step was to start cleaning the surfaces inside the car so I started with the steering wheel and I used the leather repair company LRC1 cleaner here combined with the colour lock leather brush to give that a really deep clean as it was looking pretty shiny. I follow the same approach as I did on the steering wheel, on the leather seats, where the surface was looking visibly quite shiny. However, there were some areas of the leather that didn't really look that dirty. So to avoid being overly aggressive here, I just gave them a wipe using the cleaner and a microfiber towel. On the plastic surfaces, I again went in with the Garage Therapy interior cleaner at that 1 in 10 dilution. I used a microfiber towel on most of the areas that were just dusty and then on the areas that looked quite greasy and dirty, I went in with the interior scrub pad to give those a deeper clean. I also used some cotton swabs on the more intricate areas like the air vents to make sure that the interior was as free of dust as possible. I followed my usual approach here on the pedals by using the cleaner and agitating it just using a toothbrush which is certainly the least glamorous accessory I have in my collection but it does the job and then just spray clean water on them afterwards to remove all that dirt and residue. Moving on to the protection stage here, I went in first on the leather with the Leather Repair Company LRC4 protection cream. Now this is definitely more of a sealant than a conditioner which is perfect for this car with it only being about one and a half years old now. That clear coat that's sitting on top of the leather is still definitely intact so applying a conditioner wouldn't really serve any purpose here. Instead this sealant just offers a little bit of protection from any kind of dirt or dye transfer and offers a little bit of a barrier against friction as well. On the plastics I did go for something pretty heavy juicy here and this is the Diamond Protect interior coating. So I first started off by using the prep spray in order to get the product to properly bond to the surface and then the product itself is super easy to apply. In terms of the finish this offers a slight darkening effect but it doesn't change the look of the plastics too much and it certainly does not add a greasy or shiny finish which is exactly what I look for. It also does offer UV and stain resistance and it actually is designed to last for 12 months. The only drawback of this product really is that it is quite expensive but on the flip side a little does go a very long way so you can get a lot of cars out of the bottle. I also protected the rubber mats using the Garage Therapy Dash Serum. Now prior to the release of this product I didn't actually use anything at this stage to protect the rubber as most interior finishing products leave kind of a slippery or slick surface however I've not found this product to have that kind of effect. The benefits are that it's going to prevent discoloration and cracking so just keep the rubber in better condition and of course add a slight darkening effect. Since this honeycomb design on these rubber mats is a little bit awkward, I do find that the easiest way to apply this is to actually just use a sponge. It does foam up slightly when I use this method, however it does dry to a completely matte finish and I don't find that there's any high spots. On all the interior glass, I went in with the Yum Cars glass cleaner. 
This has never let me down in terms of leaving a streak free finish and it works well even on warmer days. However, I do find that the towel that I use is probably more important than the chemical itself when working on glass and my preferred towel for glass cleaning specifically is the Rag Company FTW towel. 